Hello, fellow questers! It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today, I introduce you to this almighty book, The Secret Cipher, by Whittaker Ringwald. This mystery will blow your mind. Dan Gutman, New York Times bestselling author of the Genius Files, and as I more recently know, the Flashback Four. So this book, The Secret Cipher, is the second book of the secret box. And here's some backstory. The three main characters are Jax, Ethan, and Tyler. They are related. And one day, everything they know is changed. They find out that great committees are actually real, especially the one about Pandora's box. And Pandora, and, and that, oh, and also fact, that Pandora's daughter, Pira, had got three urns. Urns are like jars for storage. And those urns contained hope, love, and faith. These, these urns, if uncorked, could make, make Pira feel, feel those emotions whenever she is sad or lonely. But then Epimethus was overwhelmed who was Perez's father, was overwhelmed by, was overcome with jealousy, and she, he touched it, and it tempered it. It tainted its goodness, and all the emotions decided to escape, and Ephemethus um, hid all the, um, dug in the, those urns on the, in underground. And then an archaeologist, Juniper, great aunt Juniper, who happened to be um, Jack Malone's great aunt, found the urn. And after the years under being underground, the, the, jaw, the urn had begun to crave what it was supposed to hold. So if you uncork one of those urns now, it would either suck out your hope, your faith, or your love from your human soul. And that would be quite a catastrophe. A one without hope won't have any fit won't have any won't have any reason to live. One without faith would believe anyone who told him what and had would have faith in him to fill in what once had been his or her faith. One without love would feel no empathy and would be a and would be a killer that didn't care about anything. And these urns could be used as deadly weapons. And and Jackson Malone and uh, Aeson and Tyler had gone to Boston on a normal day pretending they're going to a comic book festival just to kind of save the world. The thing is, Jax got a phone call telling her that um, Great Aunt Juniper had a stroke, which means she had a short memory loss, a very impermanent memory loss, and 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 also she had to learn from the news that a bank had been robbed, and it seemed that the bank robber had used, had opened some kind of container, and all the people in the bank was sucked was turned into something like zombies. And they knew this was the urn, and they feared that great, great Aunt Juniper's urn had been stolen again. Jack Malone got um, very creepy messages and the phone calls from Ricardo, the, the super villain-ish ish bad guy who was the one who hired the camels, which, who was the villains in the last book. And... And he, he has the urn of faith, and he was the bank robber, and he wanted money to fund to take over the world. I mean, that's so, so, I mean, so weird, I mean, that's so unrealistic, but that's how it is in this book. And the character says it's, it's very unrealistic, so I'm glad to see that the author agrees with me. Um, and then, our great aunt Juniper was um, tampering with with the mu mu uh, museum's security system when, when the people found her with a stroke so that they wanted to ask what she had been doing. And, 
And Great Aunt Juniper had a code written on her belt that was like a cipher. That was a cipher. It said it said it was a code. It was a code they were supposed to use, but where? And so Jackson met his father, who happened to be a locksmith for the first time. They asked what the code means, and it was actually the it was it was a way to actually shut down the museum's security system for a few minutes. And the, and another thing is that the urn of love was hidden inside a bust of Aphrodite's Aphrodite, a bust of Aphrodite's head, and that was in the museum. So they needed the the the, the alarms ticked off so they won't be arrested, obviously. And they go there. So, so there. Uh, Jax went in in one of the women's stalls and stood on the stall on the stall on, in the toilet and connected. Tried to connect to the Wi-Fi and typed the code. And that code um, paralyzed the museum's security systems. And then, and then this, uh, and then they find out that the Aphrodite's head was put inside the storage room to be to be um, kind of fixed. So, so, so Pyra made a diversion saying she was sick and, and rolling on the ground was like she had a seizure or something. And, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Pyra, the, the one who was supposed to get the urns, had come to destroy the urns. And she had come from the realm of the gods where Zeus ruled and all those crew Greek myths were Greek mythic monsters and gods were, where, you know, the urns could be destroyed. And Pera had come and taken the urn of hope from Great Aunt Juniper to the realm of the gods so they can destroy it. And uh, pretty much it is a very, very, very thrilling situation. And, and then Jax Jax, Ethan, and Tyler finally, and and then Ethan goes in the curator on um, the secret room, uh, a curator's room where people are not supposed to go in, and they find, uh, for they find he finds the urn, and she comes out, and then Ricardo calls, and then Ricardo calls them. He says that he has Jax, and they had to trade the urn of hope and the urn of love with him, or else Jax will be hurt. And the book ends with this thrilling, with this thrilling ting in your mind. And I bet you can't wait to read the next book. And it's a very thrilling, fun mystery. And you will enjoy it anytime. And like always, the bookquester and the bookquester.